Hey everybody, it's JJM Jim or Triple J, and welcome to a new tutorial video on how to use the map editor in City Skylines, but not only that, but how to import a height map into City Skylines using terrain.party. Uh, many people have asked me to make a tutorial video on this because I created a somewhat Cape Town inspired map uh, using terrain.party and I created it for myself. It was actually the first time I'd ever made a map for my own purposes, but we streamed that over on Twitch and uh, I had so many questions. So many people asked like, could you make a, a video about this on YouTube? And I said, uh, yeah, certainly. So here we are. And so uh, terrain.party has been around for a very long time. It is basically a website that allows you to import a height map based on the topography of a real location um in the world anywhere in the world essentially and so i'm going to show you how to use it so this is terrain.party that's all you got to do is go to that website and um what you'll do is it'll start you out with a square terrain.party does take a while to load it is not perfect i will i will go right ahead and say that it is not perfect but it does make it very slick if you want to have some sort of a starting base to your map editor instead of just a clean slate so uh, here is your square. This is your square. You can move this around and basically what this does is this represents your tiles it Represents all 81 of your tiles that will exist in your map now over here on the right hand side You can see the square kilometers that you can have like how much do you want to capture of a specific area? So you can make that as low as you want or as high as you want for these purposes I'm just gonna take the biggest chunk and then over here is the quick export button i'll show you that in a second so i thought basically you can take anywhere in the entire world it does take a while to load some of the areas as you can see right there's just it's not the the quickest website and once you start to zoom in it's gonna take a little while for it to actually start rendering the places that you want it to render but for these purposes i thought it would be kind of fun to um uh go over where i live i live in minnesota and I thought we would just take a spot here. So let's just take Minneapolis and let's zoom in. And as you can see, if you zoom in, you can see your 81 tiles are represented right here. So you can just go over anywhere you want and it will create the topography. Now the topography of Minneapolis might not be that interesting. I don't know. I'll, we do have a lot of lakes and a lot of rivers here in Minnesota, but I'm gonna try to grab the Mississippi in there. And I believe that's the St. Croix River. But as you zoom in, it gets a little bit. Yep. See, there it goes. It's getting it's getting a little bit more clear now. I'm going to grab. Let's just say grab this. All you need to do is go over here to export. I'm going to ask you, what do you want to call this area? We're going to say Minnesota. And click OK. What's going to happen is it's going to download uh, the file. So as you can see down here, it's going to download the Minnesota terrain file. What you'll do is you'll open this up. And then what we'll do is it creates four different types of PNGs and a, and a README document. Now, I would suggest using the README document because it, it will just tell you a little bit more information about each one of the PNG files. The I found the that the highest quality one that I used was the USGS. I'm, I'm certain you can use any of the other ones. Apparently, it might be one of the higher quality in terms of accuracy. So now we need to bring this into City Skylines so City Skylines recognizes it, okay? So then you're gonna go to users, you're gonna go to yourself, you're gonna scroll down to app data, you're gonna go to local, colossal order, city skylines, add-ons, map editor, height maps. And then so what you'll see is in here, you will see that the Cape height map that I created is in here so then what you need to do is just simply drag your height maps you can drag all of them if you wish drag them into that folder now all we have to do is go over to city skylines and import our height map now that we're in game we'll go to editors map editor go to new I'm just going to select temperate. You can select different types of climates like boreal, tropical, European, or winter. You can create different types of maps. For our purposes, we're just going to do temperate. Once loaded into the map editor, you're going to be left with basically a very, very clean slate. 
Chirpy here with the construction hat is going to tell you about uh, the different things you have to have on your map and some recommended things that uh, they recommend that you should have on your map. So basically, this is all we have. We're left with the clean slate. As you can see, these are the 25 tiles because this is where one of the 25 where you can select your starting square. And then the outer edge, of course, is the complete 81 tile. So once we're left with this, first thing we can do is come right down to here, import height map. Click on that. And now you'll see that our Minnesota height map is here. So we'll go to our USGS map. And all we got to do is hit import. And boom, there we are. Once you've loaded it in, you're going to notice that some things aren't perfect. So this is a riverbed here. Um, it's not entirely deep enough in every area. You might need to go through and do some do some fixing up. And that's going to happen pretty much with any map that you do. Um, especially if you're trying to create something fairly realistic, but for, instead of having a, you know, completely blank slate to start with, now you have this like very intense riverbed. You can accentuate certain areas. You can exaggerate things. Now, the one thing is Minnesota is not a very hilly or mountainous region. Um, but it, keep in mind though, if you do use a topography that does have mountains, it will create a lot more of a dramatic landscape for you. Uh, this, however, is not very dramatic, but you get the idea. So terrain, that is one of the first things that you will do with your map. And the terrain tool is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward, just like in-game. However, there's a little bit more refinement that you can do uh, by creating a massive, massive brush size. You can also adjust your brush strength here versus just the bars in-game, which gives you a little bit more flexibility. There's also different types of brushes you can use. This is basically your in-game brush, always. You can have a very solid circle. You can have different styles where it grabs certain points, dotted areas that you can you can work with. One of the first things we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually just drag this river out a little bit more, so it's a little deep. So I'm gonna go down to about there, and I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna keep that brush size all the way up, and I'm gonna right-click and grab that terrain. I'm just going to widen this river and you can widen and you can adjust it however you'd like. Um, actually, I don't even think it went up there. It went over here, but you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Maybe we can create a little mountain over here. You can adjust it however you want. And if you do it all the way to the edge of the map, it will just flow out. Okay. Then yeah, it just goes, maybe it just goes off to here as well. Cause why not? It's our map. It doesn't have to be exact. But there you go. So let's add some water to our map. So we'll head over here to the water tab. And this is where you can place water sources um, and set your sea level. Now, adjusting the sea level is very, very important. You don't have to have a, a sea level or an ocean in your city at all, if you don't wish. However, keep in mind, you won't be able to have ship lines um, inside of the map editor without it. So very, to adjust the height of the sea level, very, very simple. All you gotta do is click on it. It'll show you two arrows. And when you click in the map, you can raise, hold left click and you can raise and lower the sea level. And then water will just flow in. So keep in mind, you, you might have some flooding, but that's okay. You know, if you do it a little too high, you might have some flooding in some areas, but, but don't worry about that. You can always lower the sea level at any time. That looks about right. So I'm just gonna set it there. And I'm gonna pump this up on three speed so we can kind of see and say, then instantly the water will be there for you and you can adjust the height as you wish from there so you can say eh, you know maybe that's a little low in parts let me raise it a little bit higher and then it'll just sort of raise it see now it'll flow through our rivers and it'll be look at that flow through our river and out into the ocean pretty nifty pretty nifty stuff adding a water source is sort of the same idea so let me take the terrain tool and let me create like a little lake inside of here i'm gonna lower this to about there and I'm going to grab the height and I'm going to make a link. Just a link like that. Then if I go over here to water, grab a water source, I'm going to set it to here. Although I'm going to take the water capacity down. You don't need a huge water capacity if you're making just a small lake. However, if you are going to be adding one into a river where you're going to want some flow, um, you're going to want a little bit more water capacity for a lake. Um, between like 10 and 15 is just fine. You can even go lower probably. So you, you pop it in, it'll start to spew out water. And just like the, the sea level, you can 
left click and drag and raise and lower the water level. So I want it to be about there. And it'll slowly start to fill in out of that. See, it's got like its own little underground water geyser. And now you can create a lake. Other things you have inside of the map editor, you can add ground resources. Now, keep in mind, extra landscaping tools, which is um, a mod on the Steam Workshop, that mod adds in the option to create water sources and to add um, fertile land, oil, and ore to your maps at any time, even in game. So those are things you can change uh, if you aren't sure what you want to do with it right away. Just like painting anything, you can add ore, same kind of brush size, brush strength, same tools are available to you. You can paint ore on the map, paint oil, paint fertile land, farmland here by the river. And then you will have those resources in game when you open up the map. Pretty simple. Also forest resources. Now you can add trees to the map, do anything like that. Adds a brush, same deal. Increase the strength, the size. This is totally a personal preference. When I make a map, when I'm making it just for myself, I don't usually put trees in because I know I'm gonna add them in later. I like to work with a blank slate. Uh, but if you're making a map for the Steam Workshop or for others to use, oftentimes it's nice to put some trees in just to get a little bit of decoration. It does look nicer for sure. Then, of course, you have to have roads. Chirpy is going to make sure that you have road connections coming in and out of your city. You can have up to four, but you have to have an in and an out. So to pull up, all you have access to is basically the highway roads. Um, so we're just going to take highway. All you got to do, go to the edge of the map here, click and pull in. Just like that. Okay. And when you come down here, you'll now see this green arrow on the outside. And that is indicating that is a, a successful connection where cars will come from the region. And it'll show you up here that you have one of four incoming road connections. Now, when drawing your ingoing or outgoing road connections, you have to make sure that it is going, you are building it in the direction that you are heading. So out needs to be built out and in needs to be built in from the edge of the map because you cannot flip the direction of the road when it is connected to the region. So. In this case, I'm just going to come back out here and I'm going to grab and drag out. And there you go. Now for right hand drive, I have my outgoing connection and I have my ingoing connection. And you can make more. You can have this connect all the way through to the other side of the map. But when drawing it, make sure that you do have it coming in to at least your first starting tile from where your starting tile is. And we'll talk about that in a second. But make sure you have it within these 25. Because once you get out of the map editor, unless you're using the 81 tile mod right away or you're using other types of mods that can, that can open up tiles, um, you won't be able to access this position. So you certainly don't want to build it out just about there because that won't uh, you won't be able to touch it. You won't be able to access it, especially if you're playing vanilla. Make sure that you have it working within your starting tile. That is not a uh, requirement, um, but it, it, it should be. So we put our roads in, other things that we want to have, you can certainly put your intersections. You can add the intersection from the game. Um, I can just add that right there. Just like in the game, and that's not the prettiest looking thing, but there you go. And then we'd have our little highway connection, just like an in-game map. Other things you might want to add, it's not, recommend, it's not required, but it is recommended, that you have train access. So train track is the same same kind of deal, although the two-way track and the one-way track options. One-way track, you have to use it just like you would a road. The two-way track, you just gotta build it and have it come out. Now you'll see down here that there is a two-way connection to rail running into your city. Now, of course, you could connect that all the way through to the other side of the map or just a different part of the map in general. Um, go grab it bring it through go over and out same deal with ship path if you want to have cargo ships or you want to have cruise liners coming into your city you have to have ship path same kind of deal bring it from the outside draw it along your river you have to make sure there's water access if you hit a stretch that does not give you enough water way then you can simply just widen the river all the way down and out. 
Then you'll see down here, same type of deal. You have both your arrows showing the connections. And again, you can have four of those connections on your map. Lastly is airplane path. If you want airplanes to come in and drop off passengers or cargo, you have to make sure that you have airplane paths. Very, very simple to do these. And this is really can be anywhere on this map, um, but same kind of deal. Just bring it through and out just like that. And you can have four connections to those same deal. Then there's the environment tab where you can add in rocks and ruins and fallen trees and underbrush, anything that you'd like to detail up the map for yourself. Last thing to do is under map settings, this is where you'll select your starting tile and where you can take some snapshots, some screenshots of your map for to upload to the Steam Workshop or to just have as your new map inside of the game. So selecting your starting tile, you can select any one of these 25 tiles. Now, one thing to notice, and this is actually good, if I select this tile because this is where my road access is, keep in mind, I don't have water in this area. I don't have any water access. So I could put down water towers, but you're gonna have to keep that in mind. If you're gonna upload this to the Steam Workshop, make sure you have water in your starting tile. It's just best practice. So let's just draw our road through so people are going to have water access. And I'm just going to grab that. And there we go. Perfect. Now I have a highway entrance. It's not the prettiest looking thing. The terrain is pretty crazy here with this rail, but you get the idea. You can use the terrain tool and, you know, flatten any of these areas that you wish. Um, you know, the sky is the limit. Sky's the limit with this tool. I would suggest if you're gonna do any big terraforming initiatives like building big mountain ranges or anything, it's probably best to do that within the map editor because it is free in here versus it will cost you money inside of your city. Again, you can use mods that will take out the cost of terraforming, but it's probably just best practice to do it inside of the map editor. That is going to do it for this tutorial. That is just a quick synopsis of the map editor and using terrain.party to import height maps into city skylines. I hope you all learned a little something about the map editor and now have some inspiration to create your own maps in city skylines. Thank you all again for watching and we'll see you next time.